Welcome to the first episode of the j Bull Show, recorded in 2015. It's been a long time coming, and it feels good to be back. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, j Bo. You can find me on Twitter at Bill Street Blue. That's at B-E-A-L-E-S-T Blue on Twitter. I want to send a very special thank you to Sierra Gladney and to Annette Gladney for usage of equipment needed for this production of this episode of the j Bo Show. The intro for this episode of the j Bo Show was Paradise Found, Rhyme to This in Your Car, Part 1 by Casper. You can find Paradise Found, Rhyme to This in Your Car, Part 1 by Casper on Casper's album entitled Black Salami. You can find Black Salami at thatkidcasper.bandcamp.com. This episode of the j Bo Show is dedicated to the memory of Mr. Larry Smith. Larry Smith died on December 19, 2014. Smith was a bassist, writer, music producer, and part of the production team Rush Groove Productions with hip-hop pioneer Russell Simmons. He produced for the Fat Boys and Rodney Dangerfield. Smith played on Christmas Rappin' and co-wrote The Breaks for Curtis Blow. He produced Freaks Come Out at Night and Friends for Houdini, and the first two albums for Run DMC, their self-titled debut and King of Rock. Larry Smith's contributions to music are very much appreciated and he will be greatly missed. Last but not least, my guest on this episode of the j Bo Show is the woman who gave birth to me, the woman who changed my dirty diapers, the woman who has been a constant source of inspiration, motivation, and some would even say frustration in my life, my mother, the Lord's Gladney. How you doing today, Mom? I'm doing fine. Good, good. Thank you for coming to the j Bo Show. It's good to be here. How you feeling today? Feel fine. Good, good. I know earlier this morning we were talking about your diabetes. You're a diabetic. How long have you been a diabetic? Um, about 15 years. About 15 years. How do you manage your diabetes? With my diet and my medicine. Is it hard to do? Yes. How hard is it? It's very hard because really? you have to eat certain foods and the food you need to eat costs a lot of money and you don't have the money to buy it. You don't always have the money to buy the food you need to eat? No. To manage your diabetes? No. So what kind of foods do you afford that you eat to manage? Um, The cereal I choose, the bread that I choose, it's all whole grain, Mm -hmm. whole wheat. Mm -hmm. And I don't do a lot of frying. I bake and boil. And that's how but I eat. And you take insulin too, right? Yes. How often do you take insulin? I take insulin twice a day, two different kinds, as needed. If I need it more through the day, I, I, I can take it. If my um, glucose is up, if my sugar's up. <clears throat> okay. Let's take it back to the beginning of your parenting. As a man, I want to know, just as a man, because I never have this experience. How does it feel to know that a person is growing on the inside of you? How does it feel to be pregnant? Is it weird? No. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. (laughs) Was it weird? It wasn't weird? No. It's just something. It's just nature. It's just nature? Mm Mm-hmm. It comes to a woman naturally? Right. Hmm. Were you scared? No. Why not? Because it's just natural. There's nothing to be scared of. You just are. And you just keep on moving and doing what you're doing. If you're healthy. Now, if you're scared, it's probably because something is going wrong with the pregnancy. But I had all my kids fine. Hmm. You had two kids. Right. Do you ever wish you had more or less kids? Sometimes I wish I had more. Why? More is better. More is better? Yep. Why is having more kids better than having less kids? It's just better. There's more people. More people to see about you. More people to, for you to see about. So how many kids do you wish you had? Five. You wish you had five kids? Yes. Mm. We're grown now. Did we meet your expectations? Yes. What did you think of me when you first saw me? Mm. You remember seeing me for the first time? Yeah, you were so little. I just thought, oh, the little bitty baby. You thought I was going to be bigger? Yeah, you went up four pounds and four ounces when you came. Mm. And um, 
you was five when we left the hospital. That's the first time I had seen you. Mm -hmm. And you had been born a whole week before I got a chance to see you. So you didn't see me the it's first week I was here? No, because I was sick. Hmm. And I was in the hospital. And I was around the fever. Yeah, you was in the hospital and I was in the hospital. I was gaining weight before I could go home. Right. Mm -hmm. So I gained a pound in a week. I guess About so. a pound. And they mm -hmm. sent me home. Mm. And that was the first time you saw me leaving yep. the hospital. Right. And you thought, man, it's a little baby. Mm -hmm. I was like, boy, a little bit baby right there. And you felt so little when I hold you because you just, it's like I wasn't holding nothing. You were just so little and teeny weeny, and then you slept all the time. I want you to wake up so I could play with you. <laughs> but I guess you were so little you had to sleep. I said, "Dog, I wish you'd wake up." Then when you did start waking up, it was in the evening time, and you wouldn't shut up. Just holler every evening. Just holler, 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 holler. All evening. The whole evening, damn near. Because I would sleep all day. No, it was just something every evening by 7 o'clock for two hours. You just holler. What'd you do to shut me up? Just rocked your bouncer. Your daddy walked you up the sidewalk and bouncer, and you just started hollering. Then finally it wore off. Mm. How long did it take to wear off, the hollering in the evening? I don't remember. Mm. Do you like us, your two kids? Yeah. You do? It's good. We like you too. You have two grandchildren. What do you expect for them? Do you have any high expectations for them? Nope. You don't? No. Nope. Why not? Mm-mm. That's for them to live and be happy. They're already smart. And they can read and shit. I mean, read. So, everything cool. They'll be all right. Do you see anything in your grandchildren that you didn't see in your kids? No. You don't? Mm-mm. Do you feel like you're a better grandparent? Or were you a better parent? A better parent. Which do you like more, being a parent or a grandparent? Being a parent. Hmm. Why do you like being a parent more than being a grandparent? I had more to offer when I was a parent. Hmm. What makes a good parent or grandparent to you? I don't know what makes a good one. I just do what I do. If it's good, it's good. I'm just me. I don't know what makes a good one. You think you did the best you could one. do? I know I did the best I could do. The best I knew how to do. What was the biggest mistake you made as a parent? I don't know. I'll have made one. <laughs> what was your proudest achievement as a parent? I haven't had that either. You haven't had it yet? Nope. When do you think you're going to have it? I don't know. <laughs> you were born and raised at West Memphis, Arkansas. You raised your kids at West Memphis, and you still live here. Have you ever had a desire or an opportunity to live outside the Memphis area? Uh, I have a desire, but I haven't had the opportunity. Why do you think you never had the opportunity? Or you haven't had the opportunity so far? I just haven't. Just haven't made anything about to give an opportunity. Where do you think you'd live if you didn't live here? I hope somewhere where it's not cold in the wintertime, not ice and snow. Hmm. You never married. Do you want to be married one day? Sure. Who do you want to marry? I have no idea. Somebody nice and kind and they like me. Is what you look for in a man? Right. Niceness and kindness. Right. And he like me. Likes you for you. Really like me. You have to get what likes you. Right. You raised us as a single parent. Did you or do you have any bitterness or resentment toward our fathers for being absent? No. Never? No. Good. No. If this were your last conversation with me, what would you say to me? Good what would you bad. want me to know? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> if this is your last conversation with me, the last time you're ever going to talk to me and see me in person. You wouldn't have anything to say? Mm, nothing but take care of yourself. See you later. See me later? Mm -hmm. Where do you think you're going to see me? If this is your last time seeing me, where do you think you're going to see me later? I don't me. know. I ain't never been to the other place. If it's somewhere else, I'll see you later. And if I don't, good night. Because I'm <laughs> going to sleep. 
You're listening to the J-Bo Show, and my guest on this episode is my mother, Dolores Gladney. Now, Mom, we're going to play a, a couple games. We're going to play some games. The first game we're going to play is called True or False. I'm going to make a statement, and you tell me whether or not you think it's true or false. Ready? Yes. It's never too late to be what you want to be. True. A woman can do anything a man can do. True. What about preaching? You know, sometimes they say <clears throat> that women shouldn't preach, that a woman shouldn't preach in church. You think that a woman can be just as good of a preacher? True. As a man? True. You can't judge a book by its cover. True. Fake it till you make it. True. Tell me about a time you had to fake something till you made it. Uh, the ability to read as well as I do right now. The ability to read? Mm-hmm. Well, you read pretty well now? Yes. Black Lives Matter. Yes. True. What do you think about all the... Uh, the stuff we're seeing in the news from St. Louis and Baltimore with uh, the shootings and everything. You think that's something that's new that's no. happening right now in your lifetime? Or have, has it always been going on? <clears throat> it's always with all just that uh, people got them cameras and telephones now. And they recording And then more. they got the internet. You can put your own stuff on their Twitter and all that. Yeah. But it always held with on. Um, you always heard about it? No, unless it happened in your town yeah. or somewhere close by, you didn't hear about it because they didn't put it on the news. Hmm. We're going to play a second game called Finish the Sentence. I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to leave a blank and you fill in the blank, all right? Hmm. The last person I talked to on the phone was... Sierra. What y'all talk about? Sierra is my sister. She's my younger yeah, sister. Yeah. What y'all talking I about? Do you know? In a blank. <laughs> I want to know. You don't have to tell me everything. I don't know. You don't remember? No, I don't remember. West Memphis is boring, little prejudice. Country. Boring, little, and prejudice. Yep. And what else? In country, and no money, nothing but the police. The American dream is to have enough food to eat. That's what my dream is, and I'm American. To have enough food to eat? No food to eat, enough money. If I got enough money, I can get the rest. My life would be nothing without money. My name is Dolores Gladney, and I'm a money hound. And there you have it. Another episode of the J-Bo Show and the Raps. My mom, my mother, Dolores Gladney. You got any more comments, suggestions to make mom to the audience? No. Thank you for having me on the show. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>